true. It's phobia factor. I'm your host, Brogan Fearfield. We're down to the final face-off between Taylor Screamford and Lily Ekowitz. You've dealt with spiders, heights, and the dark. Oh, I hate the dark. Where does the sun go? But now it's time for the ultimate challenge. You're about to face your actual greatest fears. I can hardly handle the suspense. I'm all sweaty and my heart is beating super fast and I'm just watching from my couch. Why do our bodies react to fear the way they do? What do you think, scientist? When you get nervous, maybe, maybe like your body also gets scared and it, and it does shake because that's something that we're not used to. When I'm getting attacked by a bear, my brain has an alarm so it makes me feel fear and to run away because our brains help us stay safe. Because if our bodies didn't react to fear, we wouldn't know what's happening around us. Fear is an emotional response to a threat, whether real <laughs> or perceived. The real villain was me! Fear is one of our oldest emotions. Nearly every animal has some type of fear response, and it serves a very important purpose. Staying alive. Fear puts you in the mindset to survive at all costs. It comes down to our fight or flight response. The fight or flight response makes your heart race, your pupils expand, your muscles tense, and all in a split second, you are prepared to take action against the threat. <laughs> or try to avoid the threat altogether. Fear kept our ancestors alive, and it helps keep us alive today. When you look both ways before crossing the street or pull your hand away from a hot stove, you can thank your ancestors for knowing when to fight and when to flee. Of course, imminent danger isn't the only thing that can make us feel afraid. Lily, you're scared to take your allergy shot. Ready? Taylor, you're scared of your aunt's dog. <laughs> that fear reflex is so strong that it can take a few moments to calm down even when you know you're safe, like when you wake up from a nightmare or watch a scary movie. Scientist Charles Darwin learned this by doing an experiment on himself. Imagine this. In a rather unscientific experiment we like to call Darwin's flinch, Charles went to the zoo and watched a snake behind glass, determined not to flinch if it struck. But when it did, he wrote, My resolution went for nothing, and I jumped a yard or two backwards with astonishing rapidity. My will and reason were powerless against the imagination of a danger which had never been experienced. Experiment time! When you get scared, you might feel your heart race, meaning it beats faster. Not a beat, a beat. That pulsing of blood through the heart. It's called a pulse, and it's something we can measure. Today we'll learn how to take our own pulse. You'll need a timer, a notebook, a pencil, and a heartbeat. Check. Your body has multiple pulse points, places where you can feel your pulse. One of them is at your wrist. Take your pointer and middle finger together and place them on your opposite wrist. Your thumb has its own pulse, so don't use that. Move your fingers slightly until you can feel your pulse. Set a timer for 15 seconds. Count the number of pulses you feel. A minute is 60 seconds, or 15 times four, so multiply the number of beats times four, and you've got beats per minute. When your doctor talks about heart rate, that's what she means. You can make this an experiment by taking your pulse throughout the day. <sighs> Knowing something's coming can prevent a surprise, but it can also keep you in fight or flight mode for longer than you need to survive. You know when you're dreading something in the future, like that big test coming up, and you get butterflies in your stomach? That's anxiety. 
Anxiety is a fear of a possible threat or a nervousness about something uncertain. So you might feel anxious about the first day of school or waiting for the results of a tryout. When that fear and anxiety take up too much energy, I'm fine, I don't even have allergies. I just don't trust that thing. That's a phobia. A phobia is an overwhelming fear of something specific. Some of the most common phobias are heights, enclosed spaces, public speaking, spiders, and snakes. But there are other documented phobias that might surprise you. There's even the fear of fear itself. Will we ever overcome our fears? Like your fear of dogs, your fear of shots, and my fear of public speaking. Oh no, I'm doing it right now. No! No! Oh no! No, no, get me out! There are people here! Fear is a natural part of being alive. We need it to survive, so our bodies are primed to feel it. And the brain is involved too, both in the physical response we have and the thoughts we have when we're afraid. So what happens in the brain when we're scared? Hmm. What do you think, scientist? Maybe I could take him for a walk. That's brave of you. Chloe! Oh. Okay. Where's that doctor? Well, I'll get her. She's ready. Good job.